Easter morning at Grace Presbyterian Church in Lantana, Florida. My name is Reese Leach. We are celebrating our second virtual Easter Sunday with all of you and soon to be back in person. We celebrate today for so many reasons, but this is a day of eternal joy that our Savior has risen. I want to thank all the people that have made these services possible over the last year. Reverend Gill, Brad Keller, Jim Leach, Leonor Inez, Barbara Stanton, Chan Bahari, and Maylene and Doreen Sineas. Without their contributions, we would be left without being able to worship together. Today we're also going to be celebrating communion. If you'd like to pause the recording at this time to assemble your communion elements, this would be a good time. And now let us worship God. We're going to say together our mission statement here at Grace. Our mission is to worship God, to study God's word, and to serve the community. And now please join me in the call to worship. This is based on Psalm 118. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now Brad's going to play and sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. Please join us in singing. Jesus Christ is risen today. O God, who was, is, and evermore shall be, to you belong all praise and glory. Angels in heaven announce the dawn of your eternal order. Trumpets herald Christ's victory as the stone is rolled away. Our mouths are open to proclaim your mercies. We lift up our hearts to you, our Judge and Redeemer. Amen. And now it's time for prayers of the people. We lift up special prayers today for Easter Sunday. Please join me. Praise and thanks be to God, the risen Lord and Redeemer. The God capable of resurrection is also the God capable of our healing. May all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, here in Lantana and around the world, be healed today, both in body and soul. Today give us new life in Christ that we may do your work here on earth. We are the light of the world. Let us be a beacon of hope and your steadfast love. Praise be to God. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll now read out our prayer of confession. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our beings, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all offenses, and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And we know that through the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Join me now in reading the Affirmation of Faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
Rejoice that we can be meeting and worshiping with our Lord Jesus Christ today. We are asked to give in so many parts of our life, but what a joy to be able to give back to what God has already given us. Your tithes and offerings can be sent to 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. And now Brad's going to play some beautiful music. to listen to you play the beautiful music that you do. Please join me now in the prayer of dedication. O oh God, giver of life, who sends the dawn and fills us with hope, we come now before you bringing our gifts. We cannot repay you for your undying mercy. Our gestures are feeble compared to your love. As we commit our days to proclaiming Christ's gospel, accept these offerings as a pledge of our faith. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this day is taken from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm so glad that we can be together to celebrate Easter. Hear the word of God as it is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, 
the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And Jesus said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and they do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson. Donna Jackson is a Presbyterian minister who one time served a small church in South Carolina. And while she was there, her father constructed a wooden cross. And on Easter, the children in the church decorated the cross with beautiful flowers. And it was draped with a cloth and then the children removed the cloth and the congregation could see this beautiful cross filled with wildflowers that they had gathered from the fields. Donna wanted to teach the children about the beauty of the cross, how something that was at one time an emblem of shame, of sorrow, of suffering, had been transformed. And she was so happy that this cross that her father had made during the time when she was pastor there was still being used as a tradition now by the church. Now, this tradition goes back to the sixth century when people would decorate the cross with flowers. And there is a legend that Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she was weeping at the foot of the cross during the crucifixion, that her tears miraculously turned into flowers when they hit the ground. It's a beautiful legend, and it is a reminder how Jesus transformed death for us. 
Today we look at that first Easter and what a sad time it was that the disciples felt defeated, that they were hiding, they were afraid of the Roman authorities. And yet the women disciples go to the tomb and they are talking among, among themselves and they have brought spices to anoint Jesus to honor him and they're so concerned about how they will get into the tomb who will remove the stone who will roll that stone away and that's what they're talking about they see the stone rolled away and then they leave but we read in the Bible that that Mary Magdalene was there, that she was there. Mary remembered everything that Jesus had told her, that he would rise from the dead, that he would suffer, and that he would rise again. Mary saw that this was true. She walks down the Jerusalem road and she remembers how Jesus had stumbled and fallen carrying the cross. She remembers the crowds jeering at him. She remembers how Jesus stopped and looked out at the crowd and said, women of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. She could remember how Jesus was whipped and how he was beaten badly. She remembers all these things with great sorrow and she goes on through the gates of Jerusalem and to the tomb. And peering into the tomb, she looks and she sees an angel says, woman, why are you weeping? And she says, because They've taken away my Lord Jesus, and I do not know where they've laid him. And then she sees, she sees Jesus, and her eyes are filled with tears. She cannot see clearly, and she says to our Lord Jesus, supposing him to be the gardener, tell me where they've taken my Lord so that I might take him away. And Jesus says to her, Mary. And at that moment, Mary Magdalene realizes that Jesus is not dead, but that he is alive. That he is alive. And that is the joy of Easter, that, that Mary made the greatest discovery of all that our Lord had overcome death, that death could not block God, but that everything that Jesus had said was true, that Jesus was with her now and that Jesus would be with her forever. And Jesus says, you go and you tell my brothers, and they were hiding, the other disciples, you tell them what you've seen. And he says to Mary, do not hold on to me, because I've not yet ascended to my Father. But you go and you tell them that that is what I must do, ascend to my Father, and then return to you. And so this is what Mary does. She runs and she finds the disciples and they're hiding and she says, I've seen the Lord. He is alive. He is alive. The joy of Easter, the joy of having hope when there is no hope. How meaningful it is for us today as we go through some very difficult times in our nation, as we suffer together through this pandemic, knowing that 
the Lord Jesus promises to always be with us and that we will be able to overcome these difficult times. At my first church in northern New York, I was the pastor for, for about 900 people in a village, and there were another 1,000 people out in the countryside. And so I would receive a lot of different calls, and, and always around Easter, I would start to get calls in the evening. Somebody on the phone would say, Pastor, I'd like to get my baby done. And I always knew what that meant. And there was a joke among ministers saying, well, you could say, would you like your baby well done or medium rare? But what they were really saying is they wanted to have their baby baptized. And uh, literally, uh, there was one year uh, for our presbytery that I baptized 25 infants. That there were a lot of children in our community. And it really helped me, serving a small town, to make those pastoral visits. I mean, they never came to my little office. I would go to them in their homes. And it was a wonderful bridge for me to get to know the people in the community. Because sometimes you'd only see them at Christmas time or Easter. And the parents then, I found, were very supportive in encouraging the children to come to Sunday school and vacation Bible school. Well, I received a call from a family, and, and I went to see them. And the little boy that I was going to baptize, he was about two years old, and his name was Noah. That's a good biblical name. And, and Noah came out to see me and uh, Noah's eyes were crossed and he had a hard time walking because he couldn't see clearly. And uh, I just knew this child was struggling quite a bit. And uh, his parents said that uh, he had this problem right now, this disability and, and you know, hopefully things would get better. But they were really concerned about him, how he's gonna do in life. And we prayed together that the Lord would bring healing to him and that he would get better. On Easter, during the time for the baptisms, I baptized Noah, and his mother said that it was the most amazing experience because at that moment, she looked upon her child not as a burden and focused on his disabilities, but instead she saw him as a child of God, that the Lord Jesus on Easter had a purpose for him, a plan, and that, that she had a greater love and concern for her child for the future and for all of her children through that baptism. Years later, I'm in Central Florida, and I get a call from a woman who sang in her choir. Her name was Marie, and Marie worked at an insurance agency. And she said, uh, Randall, she said, uh, I've got a cute story to share with you. And she called it out of the blue. I hadn't talked with her in years. She said, uh, uh, you baptized a little boy named Noah. Uh, well, I want you to know that today he was in here and that uh, his eyes have been healed. He was able to have some surgery and, and he can see clearly now and he's, he's getting car insurance so he can drive a car. It's wonderful to hear how the Lord works in different ways in people's lives. But I think especially how Noah's mother's heart was touched and that she had confidence that the Lord would be with her when she was feeling very discouraged about his situation. 
The most important thing I think for all of us to remember on Easter is that God brings hope where there is no hope. In the Gospel of Mark, one of my favorite verses is where the women are walking along to the tomb and they, they're saying over and over, who will roll away the stone? Who will move this stone? They are focused on that. And I think about that quite often in my life. It's such an important verse when I feel like I'm stuck, when there's suffering, when there's sorrow and sickness, to turn it over to the Lord and to say, Lord, help me. Who will move this stone? I'm giving it to you because I know that you can help move that stone. And I found that to be very true in my life. And I pray today that you'll remember that on this Easter, that the Lord has a wonderful plan for your life, and the Lord cares about you deeply, and that we all have the joy of God's love and grace. And we can all remember the good news for the Lord on this greatest day in history, the day when Jesus rose from the dead, that he loves us and that he will be with us now and forever. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the joy of Easter. And we thank you that, as Paul would say, we don't live as people who have no hope, but we have hope because of what you taught us and what you demonstrated in your own life. Be with all those, Lord, today who are struggling and in need of a Savior. We pray that you would come to them and bless them and encourage them. We pray that they might come to know you as their Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Today we remember when Jesus appeared to his disciples on that first Easter, that they were afraid, they were locked in a room, the doors were bolted, and they were afraid, it says, for the fear of the Jews in John 20, verse 19. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Uh, what beautiful words after everything they've been through. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And the good news for us today on Easter is to remember that we, as disciples, continue to have the presence of the Holy Spirit with us, that Jesus is risen, and Jesus is present with us right now. And our Lord Jesus invites all those who sincerely believe in him as their Lord and Savior to come and to partake at this holy table. As a minister of our Lord Jesus Christ, I set apart these elements by prayer and thanksgiving for the holy use for which he has appointed them. Let us pray. Lord, we gather here today as, as leaders in the church, and we thank you that we can be together and also with all those at home and we pray Lord that you would forgive our sins we know that there have been times when we have let you down and we've said things that we shouldn't have said and we ask for your forgiveness and we pray Lord that you will be with us now 
and that you would prepare our hearts to receive this Holy Communion. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> On the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. After the same manner, our Savior took the cup and after he blessed it, He gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I'm going to ask you all now to please come forward. And Reese, are you going to help? serve. body of Christ broken for you. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you cannot do anything. Okay. Mike, would you like to serve? Okay. the blood of Christ shed for you. Mike, would you like to lead us in a closing prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just pause in our day to acknowledge, to remember the incredible gift that you gave when you sent your son to be our savior. We thank Jesus so much for fulfilling the plan that you had, allowing himself to be hung on a cross, to be murdered, to die the death of a sinner, so that we sinners could be forgiven and cleansed from our unrighteousness. We thank you now as we acknowledge this and we remember him. We identify not only with you as our father, but with the body of Christ here on earth, doing the work that you have for us, so that all may know, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. Just a time I
joy of Easter go with you all now. Amen. Thank you. 